Welcome back, everyone. The funniness with the election of the new Tokyo governor continues. This is really starting to spiral out of control. If you like watching how sausage is made, you want to stay tuned. Michael, what's going on now with Koika Yuriko? Well, it isn't a sausage fest, if you want to put it that way. I mean, it's, it's Ms. Koika Yuriko. But goodness gracious, has she completely thrown everything we thought about, the, the, the structure and discipline of the LDP, thrown that in the trash bin. We thought, uh, maybe I think even you predicted that this election for candidates, perhaps, and then the election of from among the candidates was not going to be so impactful. It wasn't going to really disturb the upper house elections. And boy, has it. It's overwhelmed the upper house elections right now, at least in terms of the photogenic That's right. and, and shocking aspects of it. The, 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 it's the more fun to talk about. It is more fun to talk about because the other one's rather depressing, to but be quite frank. But it's also, it's really seeing politics in action. I mean, this is really a slugfest that's going on very quietly, very politely. But as you're watching how things are developed, how her meeting was with uh, Nobuteru Ishihara. Yeah, it was a meeting, yeah. 15, 15 minutes, very curt. Um, I would like to have your endorsement, sir, so that I can run as a candidate for Tokyo governor. Yeah, and, and how did that go? Um, let me think about it. It might be a better idea if you wait until after the elections, and then we can have this discussion then, okay? And uh, the, that, of course, means waiting until July the 11th. The candidacies have to be declared by July the 14th. That's a bit of a short notice, don't you think? Well, she's already lined it up. Um, I think her posters are already being printed as we speak. Uh, she is going full bore, and she has played this so cleverly that even if the LDP turns out to oppose her, boy, they are playing with fire. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to get a candidate who has as much firepower, at least and in, in terms of popularity and in terms of visibility, as Koika Yuriko. And she has preempted them. She, she seized the moment. She seized the moment. She did not allow the process to overwhelm what she wanted to do. She saw that there was an opening. There and were, confusion within the ranks. Was, and also that they were actually thinking about trying to have a bureaucrat as their candidate for the Tokyo position and have that bureaucrat be the person in charge of the Olympics. No way, not going to happen. You need someone colorful. You need someone who's out there. And you need someone who looks like he, in this case, she is in charge. Right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about her attributes, you know, where she comes from, you know, what parties she's been a member of and that sort of thing. I mean, for example, how many, how many times has she switched parties? Oh, that's, let me try to figure that one out. Uh, she starts out with the Japan New Party, then Japan New Party goes to New Frontier, New Frontier to liberal, liberal to conservative, and then she joined the LDP. So uh, however that many that was, mm -hmm. five, five different parties that she's been in. Okay. In a country like Japan where loyalty and dedication and sit on the stone for three years, you know, that sort of thing, she has been all over the place. And this is a point of criticism. She's flipped that around and said... With that kind of experience, I know how politics works, and boy, does she. Yeah, well, she certainly knows how to turn tail on people and mm -hmm. just turn around on them. And she's well, she, all... she, she doesn't abandon them. I mean, uh, Koizumi came up, also Hosokawa came up and, and kind of endorsed her just yesterday. That's right, and it, it, it's perfect because she, she, she comes from both sides. She comes from ho the Hosokawa opposition side and from the Koizumi side mm -hmm. of, and they came on, they got on, I guess it was a radio program or something. Then right. they said, yeah, it's great that she's here, but we're not endorsing her per se because we don't want to get in politics. Because, of course, they had a terrible experience in the last election, in the gubernatorial election. Hosokawa ran with Koizumi's support, and they still got whooped by Masazoe. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't want to jinx uh, their uh, protege's chances. I don't think they can jinx them, but they were a little bit careful in what they said. But look at what she's done. She's thumbed her nose at the LDP and said, I'm going to run as a candidate whether you endorse me or not. And in doing so, she's probably positively affected those unaffiliated voters who think, I don't like the LDP anyway, and she's kind of a good in-between candidate. And it's a very, very good positioning that I'm, you can support me or not. I don't care. 
Right. Uh, I've already put my name out. I've made done my press conference. They had that, the same situation with Matsuzoi, didn't they? But, but Matsuzoi was clearly running as an independent. She's saying, I, I will, you know. I'm I, LDP. I'm LDP. I'm a good party member. I'm putting my name out as a candidate. I'm just not going about it in the proper way. Right. And that, and it has shown that the organization of the party within Tokyo is very, very fractured and, mm -hmm. and not organized. And we could have assumed that pretty much because Tokyo, its relationship with the LDP is really fraught. Right. And uh, at one point, Tokyo was in fact led by the, the governorship, the position that she's being held for, she's going for, up for, was won three times by a communist Minobe. Uh, it's, it's not uh, a bastion Mm -hmm. for the LDP. They're not organized here. And it, you're right, they're a minority, and a very, very minor minority of the, the electorate. I don't know what your opinion is, but I think she sealed the deal just this week on taking such a bold, kind of risky move and really staking her claim for the, the governorship. If they try to put anybody else up, that person is going to get smashed. Uh, the LDP and uh, the Kometo in the past have put up very weak candidates as their own. I remember the disastrous candidacy of Akashi Yasushi, who had just prior to that been the UN official who had been in charge of Yugoslavia. Oh, we know how well that went. And they still put him up as their candidate. Uh, they have not been able to mm -hmm. generate out of their own capacities candidates that are viable. We, if we go back through who's been the governor for the past decade or more, we have Masazoi who ran as an independent and they followed in. Inose, who was right. the protege of Ishihara, who was a, a, a renegade LDP member. It's a position that's ripe for people who are mavericks right. and who are ready to take on the system. Well, the LDP has decided, let's put a bureaucrat in now. That was their first idea, and they, they're, they're now modifying it. They're trying to get Masia, who was formerly Iwate governor, to run for the post. And he's, he's a he's very an attractive candidate. He's a very intelligent person, but he doesn't stand a, a, much of a chance against someone like Koike, who really has a presence. He's an intellectual presence, certainly, mm -hmm. and, and has really shaken a lot of people's ideas about particularly what's going to happen to Japan in the future in the, in the areas outside of Tokyo. The population crash that is destined to happen there, he put that on the political mm -hmm. map. And the, the new three arrows of the Abe administration were based on his report, the Masada report, that really took everyone's basic complacency and shook it and say, we are on a highway to hell on this one. He could play off of that, but then again, Tokyo is the exception. Right. Uh, right. It's not a place like Iwate where his pre pre prescriptions would be significant. In fact, he'd be handling the exactly opposite problem, which is that Tokyo is way too attractive and sucks the life out of the rest of the country. Now, for someone like Koike, doesn't bother her at all. Sure. And, and so uh, it's going to be, I, I don't see the, that there's going to be a real viable LDB counter uh, to Koike. So maybe we're just, we're, she's our next governor. I, I, I believe so. We've got the election this Sunday, the 10th of July. Um, for the House of Councilors. For the House of Councilors. Four days later, they cut off who will be a candidate for governor. That's right. There's only four days there. I don't know who is going to be uh, throwing their hat into the ring, but I think it's, it's a foregone conclusion that whoever it is, is just a contender. And since it's going to be two weeks after a national election, we can be pretty sure that turnout is going to be abysmal. Also, the school is out, people are going into their holidays. I mean, it's the 31st of July. You cannot possibly choose another possibly worse date in terms of weather, in terms of people being around. You could maybe put something during the Obon holidays, but nobody puts elections at that time right. of the year. Uh, it's, it's going to be cat catastrophic. And so a person like her, who has built-in re name recognition will just romp to victory, I think. Thank you, Michael. Well, with that, I think I'm going to withdraw my candidacy. Koike Yuriko is going to be the next governor of Tokyo. You heard it first here. Thank God. <laughs>